Despite being filled with quirk and eccentricity, North Berwick West Links is widely regarded as one of the greatest courses in the world and a site of pilgrimage for students of the game. But it's easy to forget its history. Only St Andrews has played golf for a longer continuous stretch on the same piece of land. Records show that golf began in North Berwick on a small stretch of common land where a rudimentary version of the game was played in the early 17th century. First record is in 1611, January 1611, when uh, two people were found playing golf on the Sabbath, profaning the Sabbath. And current records show that they had to pay penitence uh, for that by prostrating themselves effectively on the, in the front of the minister while the minister ranted at them and then they had to sit there and pay penance until their sins were expiated, January 1611. However, it wasn't until 1832 that the North Berwick Golf Club was founded, who began to establish some formality to proceedings over a six-hole routing, which was situated near a town, on what is today the first and the final three holes. From there, the gradual expansion west began. In 1868, the club acquired additional ground beyond the previous border, the March Dyke, increasing the course to nine holes, including an early version of the now infamous Redan. Nine years later, Right Honourable John Nisbet Hamilton gifted the club more land, and the club was extended to the Eel Burn to create a full 18 hole layout. But it wasn't until 1895 when the course had sufficient space to deliver a routing of acceptable length. Many of the local professionals over those years accredited with its refinement Davy Strath, Tom Dunn, and a local clubmaker, Ben Sayers. Perhaps there is no better example of the growth in the popularity of the sport in those years than the need to triple the golfing land over a 27-year period in this small Scottish coastal town. As a result of this gradual development, the West Links today is full of character and is one of the most unique and fun courses you'll find. The raised plot of land offers breathtaking views across the Firth of Forth, out to the island of Fidra, Greigleith and Bass Rock, the extreme undulations provide endless fun and exquisite coarse furniture gives North Berwick its own unique identity. The home stretch though really is the epitome of North Berwick and one of the most engaging run holes in the game. 13th, aptly named Pit, par 4 measuring 390 yards rewards a long straight drive to allow you to safely find the sunken green behind a stone wall. Perfection, the 14th hole, requires exactly that. Find the putting surface in regulation two strokes. And of course, the most replicated and famous par three in the world, 15th, Redan. A military term referring to guarding parapet. This 190 yard hole requires a committed stroke, regardless of shot selection. Deep cavernous bunkers sit in front of a deadly swale in front of a raised front-to-back green flanked by even more trouble. A safe shot will see the ball feed in from the front right portion of the green and a more ambitious player will be able to take dead aim at the flag. The hole is still heralded as a shining example for its variety, challenge and strategic nature. And then there's the unforgettable 16th green. Present 16th Green, for example, which uh, has this peculiar two bits separated by a deep swale. Um, it was uh, a committee which instructed that, and some people would say it looks like a green which has been designed by a committee, uh, and they're quite right, it was. Uh, but it was uh, Tom Anderson, the greenkeeper, who laid it out, and then the greenkeeper which followed him, Tom Dunn, he went out to be a Ritz. He built greens out there 
and that's why it's called the Biarritz Green because it, uh, the de uh, design first became known there, but the original is here at North Bennett. Much like the other classic Scottish Lynx courses, the clubs that occupy the links are independent of the course itself, having developed in a way that mirrored wider social and economic trends in the 19th century. None of the clubs who play over the West Links uh, have you know, proprietorial rights over the land. Golf began as a kind of common sport in the area which was enjoyed by everybody. But the clubs sprang up in the 19th century. Uh, the first club was uh, the North Berwick Golf Club, whose clubhouse stands behind the 18th Green here. It was essentially a club for the landed gentry and aristocracy, and which kind of left out you know, the working classes and the merchants of the town. The merchants followed suit by establishing their own club, the Tantalan Golf Club, in 1853, and then the Bass Rock Golf Club, which is for the artisans, the working people, fishermen, even teachers, that came in 1873. So you had this kind of class structure of the three golf clubs. One story that will never be forgotten from the history of North Berwick, however, is of its exhibition match in September 1875. Young Tommy Morris, in the prime of his career, 24 years of age, with a heavily pregnant wife, Margaret, back across the Firth of Forth in St Andrews. Played in a much anticipated exhibition match with his father, Old Tom, against the East Lothian adversaries, Mungo and Willie Park Sr. This quartet at the time had won 10 of the first 12 Open Championships. Young Tommy himself, the victor in four of the last five, and not surprisingly, the event drew a crowd of unprecedented proportions. The Morrises eventually won after a closely fought 36 hole battle over the nine hole course. However, following the conclusion of the match, Tommy received a telegram to say that his wife was unwell and required him to travel back to St Andrews with all possible haste. With Tommy taking advantage of a yacht across the bay from a local resident, another telegram arrived soon after, breaking the news that Margaret had died and their child was stillborn. Such was the devastation and impact upon him, Tommy would die only four months later on a Christmas day in 1875. Old Tom would survive all four of his children, and when asked by the press about the cause of his son's death, Old Tom simply remarked, People say he died of a broken heart, but if that was true, I wouldn't be here either. It's hard to understate the significance this sad chapter of events had, not just on the Morris family, but in the game of golf as a whole. For St Andrews had lost their champion golfer and local hero, and the sport lost someone who would no doubt have won countless more titles, influenced and shaped the game and continued the legacy of his father's work. Tragic stories like these, with hindsight, make us wonder about what the game could or would have been like had the fate of Tommy and his wife been very different. And the same could be said for the West Links of North Berwick. Had John Nisbet Hamilton not leased new land to the club, there would be no perfection. Had a more practical mind prevailed on 13, there would be no pit. And had Tom Dunn not travelled to France, then we probably wouldn't have a Biarritz. But in this case, we're glad things happened the way they did. And golf at North Berwick is all the better for it. <laughs>